Good morning, Interactors. Hello, and welcome to the X Interact Podcast, the show where we talk about what we've been playing and discussing different video game topics. My name is Eric, and today I'm just joined by Gap today. And in today's episode, uh, we'll be talking about some more gaming news. Um, really, it's been a slow news week, so we're just going to be mainly talking about Final Fantasy 16 impressions and some comments Yoshida made that I feel personally that the internet is taking out of context, so I just want to discuss that. And we'll also be talk briefly mentioning about High Fire Rush me- reaching 2 million players and the announcement of Elder Ring DLC. So if you like all that stuff, feel free to follow us at xinteract underscore at uh, Twitch, Twitter, no, that's Twitter, yep, uh, youtube.com slash xinteract for the video podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, all the places you get your podcast for the audio version, you can find us there. And if you just want all those links in one neat place, go to podpage.com slash xinteract, where we have all those links uh, c- condensed in one neat spot. So go check that out. Um, but before we do that, Gaff, how you been today? I woke up today so sore because uh, Snowmageddon was yesterday. Ooh. For anyone that's, that lives um, in the northern latitudes, we had 30 centimeters of snow yesterday. Or from Friday to Saturday, and um, as soon as I woke up Saturday morning, I went outside and started shoveling, and it took me two hours to fully clear up my driveway. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. And the snow was heavy, and because it was wet, um, so I you can't really just you know plow lanes through your driveway. I had I just. One shovel at a time, I scooped out snow and threw them onto a pile. Yeah. And that pile is like is now taller than me. And then the most disheartening part was when the snowplow driver, as I was shoveling, the snowplow drove through my neighborhood street and uh, created a massive snowbank on my Ooh. driveway, which I had to then clear because otherwise no car is going to be able to get out. Yeah. That was a very long and arduous morning. So my back is sore, um, but I still went to the gym afterwards. Let's go and bench my max. And so my so my entire body is sore <laughs> from yesterday's activities. Yeah, I feel you on that. I, 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 we had a snowstorm, I believe it was on Monday, and I had to work late at night. Well, not late. I had to close the store at like 10 o'clock, so... It was snowing a lot there, and I'll, and people were just coming in. I'm just like, why are you guys coming in? It's snowing outside. Like, why are you guys coming <laughs> to buy stuff? Like, stop. Leave me alone. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was uh, an experience because I did have, like, like drive in the snow. Um, My car normally yeah, isn't n- meant for that, but I, my dad did give me some snow tires for the just in case. And so I, I, I did fine. Um, there was someone drifting in the parking lot when I was leaving, but I was like, okay, you do you, like man. Like for fun or because they no, were spinning out? Uh, uh, no, I think they were doing it for fun. It was like a truck. Okay. They 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 definitely could have handled the snow for sure. They That's were just awesome. like drifting. Um, you got the you got the four wheel drive on your car? No, my, I'm, I I just uh, I I drive a Honda Fit, so it's like only two wheel. I believe it's like front wheel drive. I could be wrong. Yeesh. Yeah, I, I could be wrong. I I don't remember exactly. I'm not a car car f- uh, enthusiast or whatever, but yeah. Um, but even for me, because I got snow tires too, driving home, uh, because everyone you can't see the lanes because there's snow covering the ground. Yeah, so exactly. Every car is just like it's pretty much a single file and slowly going to wherever they needed to go. And I was just ten minutes from where I needed to be. Yeah. Um, when the snow hit, and just turning turning left was really scary because, um, for like two seconds. My tires are just like spinning in place. On oh the yeah, road and <laughs> a car is approaching from the opposite lane. I'm like, oh my god, please go! I need to turn left. And yeah, thankfully my car went and I did not get t-boned. Yeah, no, my, where I live, I have to go up a hill, like either way. <laughs> and so I was coming up, I was, I was like going up the hill, and there was like two cars just stuck in the middle of the road because they, they they couldn't get enough traction. <laughs> And so, and so I just like passed by them. I was like, "Oh yeah, see you guys." Uh, my dinky little car just just got enough traction to go up them because those snow nice. tires definitely helped. Oh man, yeah, that's how my weekend has been going. But as for you, I see a neat little contraption behind you. Oh, a neat little contraption. What are you talking about? You mean you mean this little guy here? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. fossil. It's, it's not a fossil. It's like a new model. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> so for audio listeners, if you don't see what it is, it, it, I bought. I recently bought a record player. It's an Audio Technica uh, AT LP Go slash BT. And so I looked it up. Apparently, it's just a Walmart rebrand of the, I believe it's called the LP 60 X or whatever. And so I've heard like good reviews about that one. I think just like the Walmart has an exclusive version, even though it's basically the same model. Really weird. How much did it cost? So this one, it cost me, I, I swear, I'm, I'm probably going to get people like in the comments, like being like, oh, you could have gotten something better for that price. But I just wanted something convenient. This cost me 150 bucks. Um, okay. And then I need speakers with it, but I'm just, I just have, it has Bluetooth. I just connected to my sound bar I have here right now. Nothing too fancy. Maybe I might upgrade to like some uh, like bookshelf speakers later on to get some better sound. But it's been good, it's been good so far. I also bought four, rec- four records. So the first two I bought were also at Walmart. The Guardians of the Galaxy Awesome Mixes. And let me tell you, they're, they're awesome. <laughs> and then yesterday, I just bought the Mandalorian Season 1 and Season 2 uh, oh, vinyls. You know, for that Season 3 hype, which I still have to watch that first episode of. What I like about these vinyls is that at least the packaging um, looks nice. And the, the disc itself has art on it. Yeah, so the... So I bought the Guardians of the Galaxy ones at Walmart, and they have art on them. The Mandalorian ones, they don't have art on them. They're colored. So the season one is kind of like a, they call it a bone color, but it's like a really like whitish cream kind of look. And like, you can definitely like tell like how it looks. And then season two is kind of like this clearish blue, like transparent blue. It actually looks pretty nice. But they, but the ones from Target come with like little posters too. So it's, it's, they're pretty, they're pretty neat. I like them so far. And yeah, like, so my first experience, like, playing through them, like, on a speaker, you can, like, kind of hear, like, like the imperfections in the disc. But at the same time, I kind of feel like it's, like, a little neat to hear, like, that kind of stuff. Like, you can hear, like, when the, you can hear the static or whatever through the through the speakers. And it just kind of gives it, like, a, even though, like, these are newer songs, like, an old time feel to them. And so I find them, like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, really. I'm not, like, I just, you know, just started the vinyl collection. So who knows? So, but since you're playing them through your Bluetooth, whatever, your headphones? Uh, I can do headphones. I'm, play- I'm playing them on, this, on a sound bar right now. It's in front of me. Okay. That I have usually connected via aux to my computer. But but to me, as far as I can understand, Bluetooth has limitations on how much it can transmit. So are you actually getting greater fidelity with these vinyl discs i mean maybe not now but like once i do upgrade to like better speakers because there there is like an aux out port on the back of this thing so i can just use that and then connect it to like actual speakers and stuff like that um also i've I've read up on that like maybe having a a receiver for it will do better for that and i'm just like let me let me just take it one step at a time right now (laughs) let let me just it, it has bluetooth i have the basics down and so it's, it's it's going there, and like I'm already looking at other vinyls I want to buy, and oh boy, this is already getting expensive. <laughs> Cause these yep. these discs were like about twenty dollars each, and so like there's like way more expensive more. ones, yeah. <laughs> and about four already, and like at my job, uh, I already see like I saw like ACDC. I want to pick that one up. I saw the best hits of Queen. I saw Tron Legacy, and I'm just like, oh, I want that one. <laughs> definitely a lot and then oh, there's yeah. the persona ones that uh that are on, yeah, on i am 8 bit and i'm like damn those like the the royal one 75 dollars and i'm just and i'm just like that's a lot but i want it persona 3 a hundred dollars god damn the dancing games the a bundle of all three it's like 135 or something like that it's definitely definitely pricey but uh i think mm. it's just like neat having them you know like yeah, I can probably. buy them digitally if I want, but then it's just like, well, I don't have anything physical. It's all on my phone. That's what I do with the yeah. Persona 5 soundtrack. I bought it digitally, but now I'm just like, well, it's convenient, but like, I really don't listen to it that much anymore. 
but yeah, I'm definitely looking into like more, 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 more soundtracks for games, more, more music, and like that's gonna be pricey. Is all I'm saying. And like last year when they, when they did the, the Persona 25th anniversary, they had like that that bundle for four hundred dollars where it was like all the the music for all the games. And I was just like, I want that, but I don't have a record player, so I can't buy it. And now I have a record player. And I'm just like, damn, maybe I should have bought that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, you're going down the rabbit hole now. Yep. Gaming and, and vinyl collecting, two of the most expensive hobbies there probably is so far. Yeah. Yep. But enough about vinyl records. Enough about snow. Let's get into this week's news. I don't know what kind of segue we're doing here, but there you go. Or lack there of news. Yeah, lack of news. So there's really only one big story this week. Um, On, I believe it was Tuesday. Uh, on Tuesday, we got some Final Fantasy 16 hands-on uh, uh, previews and impressions. So there was a review, a review embargo that went up, or excuse me, preview embargo that went up on Tuesday. Um, various media outlets and influencers got their hands on Final Fantasy 16, and they posted them. Uh, we have the PlayStation blog, Square Enix blog, IGN, Eurogamer, Push Square, GameSpot, Skill Up. Um, just a whole bunch of outlets giving their details. And um, I didn't really pull up any specific article. I really only watched the Easy Allies preview and the kind of funny Gamescast preview. And so going off the kind of funny Gamescast preview that I heard, um, generally previews seem pretty positive. Um, there people seem to like the action combat. Uh, Michael Michael Hyam and I cut the kind of funny games cast said basically that if you played Devil May Cry Five and you liked it, you're gonna like this game. Like it feels like Devil May Cry and it's character action based and stuff like that. And I've heard a lot of people kind of mix on that. There's been a lot of uh, there's been a big uh, uh, divide between the Final Fantasy community. Like there is for every game, I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> uh, like what's what's yeah? Because it's, it's a departure from um, how it used to be, right? Yeah, but like I, I kind of feel like the same thing happened with Final Fantasy 15, where people were like, "This is not Final Fantasy. This is too modern." Yeah. Stuff like what that. What is Final Fantasy? Exactly, and that's that's the. <laughs> I think that's like the big argument. Really, like what is Final Fantasy? Because like, I believe Yoshi. There was an interview where Yoshida did say that Final Fantasy is what the director decides it to be at that time. So Final Fantasy from back then is different from what Final Fantasy is today because, you know, technology has advanced. Um, creative, the people, p- different people have different creative visions and stuff like that. So yeah. it's it's really, like you said, up to the creator of that specific entry. And so... This is the 16th game. Yeah, exactly. Try new things. And, like, I, I don't like the... We're already going off a different different road here. I'll I'll go back to that, but yeah, yeah. you'll have this is a different later. argument. Yeah, that we're already getting but, into. Yeah, as someone who played DMC five, um, hearing that comparison sounds really cool to me. Um, I've never played a Final Fantasy or a modern Final Fantasy. Um, of course, remakes combat system looks really cool. It's a nice compromise between turn based and real time combat, and the fact that they're leading more into, you know, your regular action rpg combat is really cool yeah and i also played dmc5 uh side note on that like i remember it coming to like game pass like a couple of months after release and so that's how i played it um and yeah that's just that's just a good game there like devil may cry 5 and that that was like years ago at this point too absolutely yeah and like yeah that game was just great it's it's like I don't know. I don't know if it's like I call it the peak of character action because I haven't really played that many of those type of games, but I kind of feel like it probably is. Like I don't think we've seen much character action games like that since, besides like Bayonetta three. And so, would Hi Fi Rush count? You know what? Probably, it probably would. I think it's like a different take on it because obviously it's like rhythm based. But yeah, I would think it would be like a rhythm, rhythm based character action. Yeah, you're right. But even then, like comparing those two are like so different. It's like apples and oranges. Mm-hmm. And even that, yeah, so, but, like, it obviously makes sense that it feels like Devil May Cry because the combat director, uh, I forgot his name, but he did work on Devil May Cry 5. He also worked on Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and, I believe, Dragon's Dogma. And so, like, he has the experience with that combat system there. And I know people are hating on it, but, like, I'm looking at it 
like from what little I saw, I was like, damn, this actually looks pretty fun. And I can't, I, I can't wait. Um, there's been other stuff in there as well where Michael Hyam, he did say that like so far the story does feel like more darkish and like people just want to kill each other. And like full disclosure, like he did say he only, they only put him like in like a section in the game. Like he doesn't have the context of the entire like story from beginning to the certain part he was at. So he, he's still unsure about like where the story is going to go from there. Um, I do want to see that myself as well. Um, I want like for me personally, I don't like it when demos just throw you in a random section of a game because it does feel like you're experiencing things out of context. And I I kind of feel like that's probably just what happened with him. He didn't have the context of the story, what was going on. And so I, I, I want to wait to see more about like about that stuff when reviews come out. Um, well, yeah, like combat's looking great. The the cutscenes and like the voice acting you know, I've heard is like pretty good, and so just like general all around in like impress impressions so far are positive. Um, obviously, just with the preview period, things can change when the full game comes out. But so far, it's looking pretty good for Final Fantasy sixteen. Um, Gath, did you like happen to watch any of the previews or anything like that? Yeah, I also I also listened to the games cast. It sounds like a fun game <clears throat> um uh and the story elements i think he was kind of mid on the story yeah he, he's gone so far um i oh and i remember hear, him talking about the music as being really good yeah music of course uh i'm gonna butcher the, the same composer as final fantasy 14 yeah uh Mas- i can't yeah. pronounce his first name but Soken, he he's a god the the, the, the music <laughs> in the in 14 is so good and like to see that carry over to sixteen, I'm I'm very hyped for that as well. My only disappointment with this game is that it's not coming to Xbox, or maybe it is, but they're not allowed to say. Yeah, so there has been a lot of comments about like the PlayStation exclusivity as well. Um, so I guess we can just like kind of go into that as well. Uh, I don't have the exact story pulled up with me as well, but Yoshida did say that you know this is a six months timed exclusive to PlayStation. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to come to other consoles or PC in that six month after that six month period is up because he wants to get the game right if it does come to PC. He wants to make sure it's optimized and stuff like that. And so, yeah, so it seems like six months is the is the exclusive exclusivity period. And I I do believe that in the original trailer, like the fair, the very first time we saw it, there was a disclaimer in the like in the bottom. That did yeah. say it was like a timed exclusivity, but then like later trailers, like they pulled that, they pulled that away, and so this is like just like kind of going back to that um, statement, where I guess it was true from the beginning that it was like a timed exclusivity, but I kind of figured that people were people were getting mad at him because he was like, just buy a PlayStation and play it. It's not coming to PC, and I'm just like here thinking like, well, he obviously can't say it's coming to PC. He's got. It's yeah. probably an exclusivity clause where you can't mention when it's coming. And so I, I was just like kind of baffled that people were getting mad about that, like it, in the past couple months about that. And like now he finally like laid it out there saying like, yo, it, it is six months exclusivity, but it's not coming to con- PC within six months. And then I also hear people getting mad about that as well. It's like, well, if it's not coming to PC in six months, it's not a six months exclus- exclusivity. And I'm just like, but have you guys seen like recent pc ports recently like of other games like the pc ports are pretty bad recently like i don't even know why and so if i was a pc player i'd want the game to be running well so take the time you need to to optimize it you know just a little weird thing about that like i like it's as uh uh, we're gonna go into it but like as a yoshida fan and like all of his work in final fantasy 14 a lot of his comments have People have been hating on a lot of his comments, and like I kind of feel like they're just a lot of them are taken out of context, and so like I kind of want to just go through some of those as well. Um, I the big one is he mentioned something about like that JRPGs around 15 years ago, um, kind of felt like a derogatory term, and uh, people did not like that statement at all. People thought that he meant that he hates RPGs that or excuse me that he hates jrpgs and that jrpgs are not good and he's making a not jrpg game and i'm just here like 
do you guys not remember the PS3 and 360 generation? Like, people were hating on JRPGs a lot that time. And, like, on Twitter last night and still ongoing today, there, there is a trending topic of X-Play. And, Gaff, I don't know if you've seen this, but it's just a whole bunch of clips from the old X-Play back in the 2000s of them just being blatantly racist and stuff to like the Japan to like Japanese games. And oh, it's so that's what that's going it's on. real oh. like you look through it and you're just like, God damn, like this was this was not a good thing back in the day. And it just kind of proves the point where back then JRPGs were just looked as like as like as like a negative negative thing. And like it's not only X Play. Um BioWare's co founder there was an interview like about a couple about like almost a decade ago where he said that JRPGs were just not they were not evolving they were not they just were not good at all and then I, I, and then there was another one um do you know the game Fez it was like an indie game like back yep. a couple years yep the creator of that game Phil Fish I I literally watched the clip last night there was a Japanese developer uh asking him a question like at a GDC Q and A asking him like what recent Japanese games were um were an inspiration to him. And then he just straight out said that Japanese games suck. And him and the rest of the panel were just laughing. They they were just laughing and this guy and this poor Japanese developer, like the look on his face, like he just looked he just looked heartbroken. And I was I was just like looking at that video just like what the fuck man? Like what how how was this okay back these couple of years? Like this isn't this is not good. Like Yoshida's comment has a point. People, JRPGs were just not, and Jap, J- Japanese games in general were just just not looked at great in, the, in that generation. It was bad. It was real bad. Mm. Monolith Soft. Um, they had a re- interview a couple of years back too. I think for Xenoblade Chronicles X, they said the same thing. Like J- they didn't like how jrpgs are being associated with that that negativity and i'm just here like people people are miss are misconstructing yoshida's word to him saying jrpg and i'm just like did you guys read the interview like this is what he's talking about and now on twitter you can see perfect examples of what he was talking about and i'm just here like this is this is what this is what he was talking about. There's a lot of revisionist history going on about the about people never talk, never saying JRPGs were bad, and like I'm just like, yo, you guys got to look at the context because this was not great in in that in that generation of games. Um, and then he did say like now obviously it is a positive. It's more looked at the positive term, and I do agree with him on that. But like, it it was just bad in that generation of games. Like it was not good. Yeah, I, I don't blame him for, um, for guess saying that and kind of wanting to, because there's been such a stigma around JRPGs until fairly recently. Uh, who can, I don't, I don't think you can be mad at him for wanting to, maybe deviate from the tropes and cliches that make a game in that genre, a game in that genre. Yeah, exactly. Like in in his interview, he uh, was I believe it was with Skill Up, um, he did say that he's like. They don't think of them making it making a JRPG. They're just thinking it was making it an RPG. And yeah, like, I saw that quote. and like now that I think about it, like I don't even remember when I my I myself started using the term JRPG. Like back in the day, like when I was like playing those games, I was just like, oh, Pokemon's an RPG. Uh, Kingdom Hearts is yeah. an RPG. Like I can't remember when I started specifically saying JRPG. And like that's got that that just got to be something I just picked up because like. The internet just called them JRPGs, and I just started rolling with it. I guess I associate JRPGs with like Xenoblade. Yeah, me. Xenoblade for me is just full of anime cliches. Yeah, and I think like that's like one of the things that people like just thought of as JRPGs. People hear the word JRPG and they just think anime cliches, and like it, it's kind of weird because like. The specific term JRPG just means Japanese RPG. It's an RPG made in Japan. But like, is Elden Ring a JRPG? Dark Souls is a JRPG? It's like kind of it's kind of like weird to like. It, it's we, it's weird, you know. We don't we don't call like other other uh, genres J J platformer J sh- first person shooter, you know. We don't 
we don't call them by that so like why is jrpg like the one that we do it's it's a, it's a really interesting topic in my opinion it's like it's for, it's definitely food for thought yeah i mean to get <laughs> this might be a little too insightful for this this platform but cuz gaming has been gaming did kind of start in the east um and then Japan obviously they they pushed that a lot they they had a lot of like very early hits and then uh the west america and uh like tetris with russia like the west started innovating they they created good games too and then there was this you could say there's this divide because gaming has been cultivated in such like opposite corners of the world and and one side views the other as just so different um from the other and there's not really an like people don't really consider the stuff in between um so and it's not like i wouldn't say it's a rivalry but i guess i don't know people in their minds they just put japanese games in their own little pocket because people pop culture like the pop culture that we consume is western we're from the west and so we view Japanese games as like those other games. I, I'm I'm just I'm just spinning things. <laughs> yeah, no, way. I get you. And like, it's not as bad. I feel like it's not as bad today. But like, there definitely is some stigma around like JRPGs still today. Um, like I said, not as bad as it used to be. But like, I still see people out there being like, "Oh, it's a JRPG. I don't want to play that." And like, they just like it's just is like. JRPG just like means so many different things now. Like it doesn't have to be like the anime trope you're talking about. It doesn't have to be turn based at all or anything like that. And so like mm -hmm. it's just just kind of weird. You know what I mean? Like it's something I never thought about until this interview came out. And like it, it's it's really weird. I think I'll I'm still gonna call them JRPGs just because like that's just been the accepted term for it now these days. But it's just like it's just really weird to like think about think about it and like. How we just think about how weird genres are because like there can be a subgenre of a subgenre and like it just goes layers deep and it's just really weird. Well, for example, in music, you have pop and you have K-pop. Exactly. And as a big listener of K-pop, I, I I can speak to this. Like, I mean, on some level, you can think it's weird that we specif spe specify Korean pop as K-pop and. There are tons of subgenres in K-pop too. Like there's indie, there's rap, there's jazz, um, there's rock. Um and um I and to me it's not as arbitrary as the term JRPG because K-pop they they do have differences. They do tend to have differences in their song structure and composition as as opposed to American pop. Um for example, I learned this really cool fact like uh K-pop, like they have to be intrinsically different sometimes because the, the Korean language, like they have more syllables in an average sentence than uh, an English sentence does. So therefore, they have to kind of kind of write their their beats and rhythm in a different way. Yeah. So I, in that case, I can see the DNA in K-pop being different from pop, and then therefore uh, justifying having to uh, give them that label. But as far as JRPGs go, you're like you're right. Um, from software they make dark souls and elden ring who and those are i mean if you put give that to a random person i don't think many people will be able to tell it's made by a japanese company because it, it doesn't just scream japan and tokyo at, at your face yeah so i mean i think i've just i've basically i said i was gonna do a rant today in the discord and i think that's just been my rant where people like to misconstrue his words um and so there's that. Um, just going back to like some of the details about Final Fantasy 16, uh, there is a public demo planned for like two weeks before launch. So I'm definitely excited for that. Um, I like I said, I just can't wait. That's really all it is. I can't wait to play that. Uh, it's semi open world, um, which is I think in my opinion good because Final Fantasy 15 had an open world, but it just felt empty. It felt like nothing to do there i think it was just an open world just for the sake of being an open world like to follow the trends because like open world gaming was pretty big around that time um 
main story will be about 35 hours, which is awesome. It doesn't need to be bloated. Um, even though I do like my long RPGs, sometimes I can get a little too much. As you probably noted with Persona, your recent Persona 5 playthrough. Not for me. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like we said, full action. There's not going to be like any hybrid system like Final Fantasy VII Remake is. Um, but yeah, there's... There's just like a lot going into this game. Uh, graphics look really good. I think it's probably one of the first PS5 games that I see that'll probably like that like fully takes advantage of the console because while there's been like some pretty good games so far on like both systems, I kind of feel like none of them have really like screened the next gen for me just yet. Well, and, it's about time. It's yeah. only been Three years into the cycle. Yeah, it's, it's a little weird because we're already three years in, so it's a little... This this console generation has definitely been weird so far, but well, what can you do? There were the chip shortages and all that stuff. Um, Not many people could have gotten their hands at PS5s yet, so there's that. I know they're in stock a lot more in the, uh, now, so if you don't have a PS5, go get one already. Um, But yeah, I think that's just really it for Final Fantasy um, 16. There's a, there's a lot of interviews out there. I'm not going to go into each one of them. A um, lot of gameplay details, but again, not going to go into each one of them. If you want a more in-depth look, go check out those interviews. There's a bunch of them out there. But moving on from Final Fantasy 16, we're just going to do some quick hits as that really just was the biggest story this week. Um, so our first one from Bethesda's Twitter account, Hi-Fi Rush reaches 2 million players. 2 million players have moved to the beat of Hi-Fi Rush. Keep on being rock stars. And, uh, yeah, Hi-Fi Rush, like, that good was, game. Like, good game, yeah. That was, like, was that last week, months it released, right? Yeah. It feels like forever ago already to me, but, like, yeah. Two million players is, like, nothing to laugh at for, for like, that kind of game where it's rhythm-based and, like, I kind of feel like a lot of people aren't into that kind of genre. But I feel like it being on Game Pass, just, like, and it being a Shadow Drop definitely helped it out a lot. For sure. Well-deserved. Well-deserved indeed. And like, yeah, that's great game there all around. Uh, where's High Fight Rush 2? Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but if that ever happens, I'll definitely be playing that. And then our next quick hit, uh, a little follow-up from last week where Steven asked me if I think Elden Ring DLC is going to happen. And I told him no because I was like, it's already the, been like one year since release. They just recently had an event and they didn't announce it there. So I was like, no, nah, I don't think it's going to happen, unfortunately. And they're, and, and Armored Core got announced, so they're probably just moving on to that. And uh, lo and behold, uh, the official Elden Ring Twitter posted an upcoming expansion. Or, excuse me, Rise Tarnished and let us walk this new path together. An upcoming expansion for Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree is currently in development. And so uh, that was literally two days after we posted the podcast, after we did the podcast. And uh I'm here uh, eating my words. I'm here to say that Steven was right. I was wrong. and uh, Or no, what did Steven say? Yeah, I think Steven was right. I was wrong. But uh, hey, I'm happy to be wrong. Can't wait to play some more Elden Ring because I had fun with that game, with especially with friends, just going around, keep killing bosses. Definitely a fun yeah. time. Um, when this why, is not, gonna... why not add 50 more hours to your 400-hour experience? Exactly. <laughs> and uh, whenever this comes out, I don't know. There's been rumors going around saying it'll be like around the fall time and that it might be... I forget that the rumors said after uh, Armored Core before. But I can't remember. But it's a, it's a little wild to me that From Software is now having Elden Ring and Armored Core. And like that's going to be a wild time whenever those two release. But that's just been it for the quick hit story. Um, we're going to move it on to our crossplay segment where I'm going to shoot it over to you, Gaff. What have you been playing this past week? So in the two weeks since I've been on, I th- I don't think I mentioned that I beat Hi-Fi Rush um, since uh, last time I was here. So I've beaten it. It's great. Um, that final level is really, really cool. Um, as, as campy and corny the story can be, I mean, the characters are still charming. And when everyone comes together at the end to help you defeat the, the final enemy, um, it's it tries to hit you in the feels, and it it was pretty close. Um, 
And of course, it's a very fun boss fight that took me. I died a lot. It took me a lot of redo. So my final score at the end just tanked. <laughs> <laughs> but I finally did it. And the one of the songs at the end of the game really bangs hard. And playing this right after playing 100%ing Persona 5 Royal was a really nice combination because they're similar enough vibes. They, they just float into one another. And then after beating Hi-Fi Rush, I then went into Persona 4 Golden. Also you on Xbox man. Game Pass. Yep. Um, also following a guide for that. But this game is much harder to uh, 100% um, than uh, Royal is, especially on a single playthrough. Um, Actually, I don't even know if you so, can beat it in the first... I think you have to do New Game Plus to get, the, to get the, all the achievements. It's po- Possibly. Possibly. I think you have to beat the super boss, and that's not unlocked until New Game Plus. What's the super boss? Well, who do you think it is? It's always the it's the well, our, titular Persona super boss, is all I'm saying. Well, it's this game is like almost not a decade old, but okay, fine. You might we'll, we'll keep okay. It. I mean, if you want to tell me, it's not really like story spoilers because like it's just a test. But it's the Velvet Room attendance, you know, like that. Oh. Each game's Velvet Room attendant is always the super boss. Oh, so the, oh, Persona guys. 3 was uh, okay. Elizabeth. Persona f- uh, Persona 4 is Margaret's. Persona 5 was the twins. Persona okay. 5 Royals was spoiler. Um. Okay, so um, this game, after playing Royal, obviously it's an older game and it's not going to have a, ton- a lot of the, the nice features that Royal has. So the game, at times, it feels slower and also faster. It's faster because it's a Vita game, and like the menus are quick. Like a lot of the animations are quick because they're not trying to do anything flashy. Um, on the other hand, it's slow because um, combat. You know, you take for granted how you can just press yep. a single button on your, your controller in order to do an action. Press X to attack. Press Y to shoot. Press uh, right bumper to switch your persona. You can't do that in Golden. You have to navigate the the menus manually in order to do everything. Plus, first when I played Golden the first time, I did not, I never switched my persona in combat. <laughs> Wait, what? Um, I know, right? I always thought, I don't know why I thought this, but I just used the same persona. I I would I would still fuse. Oh, okay. I was gonna say still fuse and not give you the whole game. I would never uh, take advantage of my full roster of personas. I am now. And now I realize that you can only switch your persona once per turn. Wasn't the same so, Persona Five though? Well, or do you mean mm-hmm. like I can't remember exactly? But they, do you mean like if you get a one more, like you can't if you switch it again? if you select a persona in Golden, like you're stuck on them. Oh for yeah, your yeah, turn. I got you, I got you, yeah. In Royal, you can you rotate through all of them. You, you browse through all of them by pressing right bumper over and over. Again. Yeah, yeah. You're not you're um, not locked in until you make a until you like do an actual move. I get what you're saying. An now. attack, yes. So, um, I better hope I don't misclick in golden because otherwise it could it could be a bummer. Um, other things is, yeah, the dungeons, they suck. <laughs> They're just hallways, randomly generated hallways. Yep. And SP recovery. SP is a very difficult resource to manage in Golden, which makes doing the dungeons in one day much, much harder. I know you can use the Fox um, in order to restore your SP and HP, but it costs a lot of money. And that's another thing I want to say. I am so broke in this game because in, or- in order to do all the confidants, I need their corresponding personas in order to... Um, maximize the amount of points I'm getting in their social link. However, I'm finding that sometimes I'm out of room in my personas, so I have so I have to get rid of some and summon another one from the compendium, which costs money. Uh or I have to oh th- this this was a notable one. For exa- for the jester uh social link, I had to I, I need I need a jester persona, which you can't just obtain uh from the cards. I had to fuse for it and I had to spend a ton of money to summon the right personas in order to get get the the first available one. Uh which speak speaking of which, yeah, the 
the calculator, the fusion calculator for Persona 4 Golden is a little complicated for me. I can especially for a triple fusion, it's you gotta do some math. There's a gin ginormous chart on game FAQs that I'm having, I'm struggling to interpret. But thankfully, someone online had a recipe for me that happened to work. So that was okay. <sighs> but yeah, old game is old. What are you gonna do? I'm still having a ton of fun with it. It's still. It is still my favorite Persona game. My favorite of the two I've played, but it's my, it's my favorite. Um, because the characters, they're still in, as endearing as ever. They feel like you're friends because you're just hanging out in this little small town. Um, and everything just feels cozy and nice and warm. And music still bangs. It, I, I, like, I like the game a lot. Um, otherwise... Do you have something to say? Oh yeah, you were you were just like mentioning how like you pref you like Persona Four more than the Five, and like I'm kind of like the opposite where I played Persona Four Golden first and I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, I fucking love that game. But like but when moving up to Persona Five, it felt like oh, this is like a huge um uh what's the word I'm looking for? Not expansion. What's the, um I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but like it definitely felt like a huge like leap forward. That's what I'm looking for. I feel like a huge leap forward because you're going from small town, small town Inaba to like Tokyo. Tokyo. To, to, to like to, to Tokyo. And like, obviously the graphics were like a lot better. The dungeons were all like handcrafted in, in, in there and stuff like that. And it just felt like a huge step forward when I played it. And yeah, it's more, Royal is more fun. Yeah. And no one will argue that. I, cause like, I, if you were to ask me, which one do you want to replay again? Persona 4 or Persona 5? I'd be like, yeah, give me Persona 5. I'll play through that again. Because, like, going, playing Persona f uh, 4 after playing Persona 5, like, you do miss a couple of things. Like, you were just mentioning the battle system. That, that just, combat in Persona 5 is just snappy and quick. And Persona 4 is just like, okay, well, I gotta select my, select through my list of commands, hit that, and just watch the battle play out and stuff like that. And so, it's 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 still good, but Persona Five just felt like a whole lot better for me, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm I'm here for the story and the characters, and I'm I'm right now I'm at when we're trying to rescue Rise, um, so I'm pretty far into it, and I'm loving it so far. And what I like about Persona Four Golden is that it's a murder mystery, and knowing how it plays out. Playing the game again now, it's really fun spotting um, characters. It's, it's fun pick, looking at how the characters talk and move, knowing how it'll all resolve in the end. It's a good time. Fun fact: when I first when I first played Golden, yeah. when you get when you get to the moment where you have to, where you have to select who the murderer is, I was like, I don't know who the murderer is. Like I never caught up. I never call on the clues <laughs> during my playthrough. So yeah. I, I had to look at a guide, and I was like, okay, it's this person. I'm like. All right, so, but like he's not the murderer, so why would I pick him? And then the whole, then once the cutscenes play afterward, I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, oh shit, I'm, I'm player, just fucking, sure. I'm just fucking dense, right, I guess I don't know, but no, that they hide like if you're not paying attention, they hide who the murderer is pretty well, mm -hmm, for sure. One criticism I do have Persona Four Golden is that the true ending is locked behind a very specific um, set of dialogue options. Mm -hmm. You can, um, which is much, you can miss the final boss too. Like it's possible to just not fight that final boss. Absolutely, yeah. Like it, like I was like playing through with a guide my first playthrough. Not, not like a whole guide, like just like a how to get the best ending guide. Basically, is how I yeah. was playing through it. And so, like, if I didn't read that guide, I was there was no way I was fighting that final boss because like I would have never miss known. Out on, yeah, a, a huge part of the content you miss out on what makes Persona Four Golden, Golden. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so when versus, I played when I played Persona Five, I was just like, "All right, I'm not missing anything here, right?" <laughs> when that final day happened, and thankfully it's pretty easy in Royal. All you gotta do is max out. I think Maruki is really, truly only the the necessary one. Yeah. Well, and I'm not but sure I, if Kasumi. But I'm just talking about like, like when I played base Persona Five, where I was when they were like, "All right, oh, it's time for you to go yeah, back yeah. home." I was like, "All right, let me make sure I'm not missing anything here." Because like when when they when they asked you like do you want to return home I was like no <laughs> like yeah. like in Persona Four where you have to hit no to complete it even though the logical answer would be yes 
and roll like you can mess up if you like if you take any bad deals from Sai. Yeah. Or but those are like more uh, obvious. From, you know what I mean? Those exactly. Are, like go- if you're the hero, there's no way you're gonna pick those options unless you're just trolling or or you want to look at the bad ending yeah. for completion's sake. So that's how I've been game. Oh, I've been playing some Master Duel. Been grinding. I'm building a new deck. There's a lot of ultra rares and super rares. Um, what's new? So just grinding out gems. Playing my Dino deck. I've that was my first deck, and I've I changed it up a bit. Found some new combos, so it's a little more fun. Yep, and that's it. Cool. Uh, what I've been playing. So after I finished Theater Rhythm, um, I think I talked about it last week. I decided. To boot up Final Fantasy X-2. I think now is the time I'm gonna try and finish that game. Um, and I think now that I understand it more, because I think the last time I played it, I don't think I don't think I was understanding it correctly. And so now I feel like I have a better understanding of the game and what I'm actually supposed to do. Because last time I played, I was basically just like rushing through the chapters, and I ended up being underleveled for one fight, and I just quit after I lost that fight. And so this time around. Apparently, you're supposed to do like some side stuff before you do the main, like the main story stuff, because it 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 gives you um more. It, it lets you see like what happened to the world of Spira after Final Fantasy X. It lets you see like more about what the characters are doing, and it also gives you like the opportunity to like of course level up more and stuff like that. So, I think I'm. So if I'm if I remember correctly, I think I reached like chapter five or something, like at level fifteen, and now I'm still on chapter one, but I I'm already like level fifteen now. And so I think I'm doing it correctly now. Um, I understand the battle system a lot more. Uh, Final Fantasy X was like a pure turn based game where you just wait your turn and you hit the item, you hit the items and stuff like that. Final Fantasy X two goes back to the ATB system that like Final Fantasy. I believe it was like it started on four, four through nine uses. So that they they all use the same battle system where your characters have to wait a specific period of time before they can activate before they can do a turn. But battle is still real time. Everyone's still act acting. It's just there's like a cooldown until you can act or whatever and stuff like that. So that's how ten two rules. It's that kind of battle system, and the job system is pretty interesting in that game where any care any of your party members can be any job. And then you have to use moves from that job to master it and unlock more moves. So sometimes I would just go in a battle and just not even attack the enemy. I would just like maybe use a, a debuff on them so they can't attack me. And so I can just spam spam abilities so I can get their their points up for the job and stuff like that. So it's, I'm, it's a slow burn so far. I'm still on chapter one. I think I'm going to start heading to do story stuff, but it's been a lot better so far. I'm not like... I already know what to expect from the game. I'm not like hating it so far, so there's that. And then on what day was it? Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday, I started playing uh, Metroid Prime Remastered because I finally got a physical copy of that uh, after the physical copy drought for that game, where you can find it from nowhere. And I literally beat it not yesterday. I beat it on Tuesday, not Thursday. I was shocked you beat it so fast. Well. Metroid games aren't usually that long, to be honest. I finished it within like 10, I think it said 10 hours or something like that. Um, 75% item uh, completion. So I got like most of the items. I scanned almost all the enemies except one missable enemy. And I was like going through my my log and I was like, okay, what am I missing? And so I looked up which one I was missing. It was like, oh yeah, you, you missed this one enemy. And uh, you can't get if you get if you get the specific item before scanning the enemy, the enemy's just gone for the rest of the playthrough. I'm just like, God damn it, one enemy, one. And I was like, God damn it. And then I also missed like one Chozo lore, which is like on the, on the walls, but like, I could have found that whenever. It's just that one enemy was like, oh yeah, I missed that a specific one. I'm like, God damn it. So there's that. But uh, yeah, Metroid Prime. Um, I think it's good. I think it's definitely like. Definitely still holds up to this day. I can see why it was like beloved back in the GameCube era. Um, I have like some little criticism about it here and there. Um, it didn't wow like wow me like as uh, other people did, but I think that's just the fact that I just wasn't there for it at the time. Um, I've played other twin stick uh shooters at the time, so I don't feel like as wild about it. Um, but it was it was still good. Like don't get me wrong, it definitely 
was a Metroidvania in 3D. It definitely felt like 3D Metroid. It there's that, and then there's just like a lot of backtracking, like a little bit too much that I would like, and like that's normal for Metroidvanias, but I just kind of felt like it was like a little, little bit too much for me. Like I I would constantly go back to other areas, and I like have to walk through areas to go to another area, and just kind of felt like just a little too much, and so um I don't know if like Metroid Prime two or three ever fix that but there's that and then um another thing the map could have been i think a little bit more detailed like it's pretty cool that it's like a 3d map but like it doesn't really show you like what's in the room so like if i scan like if i see a pickup that i can't uh that i can't grab at this moment i, I wish it was on the map so i know like okay this is where an item that i couldn't get is currently at and it's just not there so i, I couldn't be able to like pick up anything that I don't remember where they were. Um, I read up on this and apparently that is fixed in Metroid Prime 2 and 3 where on the map there are like dots that say like, hey, here's an item you didn't pick up yet. So if they ever remaster or port those, that'll be good. But yeah, Metroid Prime, I definitely, definitely still good. Definitely recommend it, especially at the 40 bucks. This is definitely a good remaster. Like there are, there are side-by-side -side comparisons that show you like the GameCube, the Wii and the, and the Switch version. The Switch version definitely looks the best. The Switch version has a lot of work put into it. I applaud Retro Retro Studios for um doing this work. This this definitely is a good remaster in every sense of the form. It's just that Metroid Prime Bo itself borders on remake. Yeah, exactly. It's just Metroid Prime itself. I wasn't like as wowed, and I think that's just due to the me not playing it at the time. Nothing wrong with the game itself. It still does hold up. It still is good. Um, yeah, I give it like, I didn't put it on my Twitter yet, but I definitely give it like a, I don't know. I, I think an eight out of 10 is, is what I would give it. Definitely, definitely worth picking up. But yeah, that's all I've been playing on this week's crossplay. All right. Well, does that wrap it up, Eric? Yeah. So, uh, we really don't have anything else to talk about. Um, I gotta pimp. I'm gonna pimp the Q and A's because uh, we do have a Q and A form. We did have questions before. I just haven't pimped it this at all, and so we're gonna do it. I don't right know how now. I feel about the use in your usage of pimp, that. Yeah, word. no, no, you're right. I promote it. Promote it. We're gonna say promote this time. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been really promoting the Q and A link. Um, they're always in in the description and the show notes on our podcast and YouTube. So, if you have a question for us at uh, any time, just send it in on the Q and A form. And we'll read it out in the next episode of the show. So be sure to stick around. Be sure to be sure to send in something in for us. You know, we like the guest interaction. Um, but other than that, that's been it for today's episode of X Interact Podcast. Thank you for listening, and join us again next week, where hopefully everyone is together again this time. Um, I believe next week's topic is supposed to be for Star Wars, but uh, and that was supposed to be for Jedi Fall Jedi Survivor, but that got delayed. So I'm not sure what we're doing next week. But no matter the topic, be sure to stick around for that because you don't want we won't want to miss it. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on all your preferred podcast platforms like Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Uh, we're on Amazon. I believe it's called Amazon Music or Amazon Podcast. Can't remember which one that is, but yeah. Subscribe on there. Leave a review. Helps out a lot. Follow us on social media to keep up to get up to date on the podcast. Uh, that, that'd be Twitter, where we're mostly mostly active. I'm trying to get active on Twitter. It's just that I always forget. So <laughs> if, if you interact with us on Twitter, I'll interact with you on Twitter. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, uh, twitter.com at xinteract underscore, um, youtube.com slash xinteract, podpage.com slash xinteract for all those links all in the one place. Um, be sure to stick around for that. And uh until next time, get primed for Metroid Prime.